Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Hello everybody. My name is Nabil Asmat and I'm a fifth grader. With my sister Sitara Aisha, who just Adam. completed her 12th class, and my second sister Shama Anju, who's a seventh grader. We three plan a series of presentations on data networking basics. Please note that our YouTube ID is to tell you our story. Our main target audience is smart and ambitious kids under 15 who are seeking to be ID professionals at young age systems. And the special thing about a video is that it's a single shot, means unedited shot. Uh -oh. Hold on a second. It was my friend. Sorry for that. It's an silent one now. Let's proceed. Yeah. What was that? Yeah. The special thing about a video was that it's a single shot, means unedited, short and simple for kids to understand easily. This is our third class and my first class and now we are going to discuss about firewall. Firewall. Move the file or the left. Wall. It's like a wall on data networking. But this wall is not like an actual wall. An actual wall blocks everything. You can't go past it unless you're some superhuman. But the wall I'm going to talk about, the firewall, blocks certain data traffic. In other words, it allows only trustworthy data beyond that point. It is a kind of data filter which allows some and blocks the other. In fact, a firewall is a part of a computer. It could be installed as a software such as antivirus. Examples of antivirus are McAfee, AVG, Kaspersky, etc. And it, even it could be installed on a network device such as router and it can protect a whole private network. The whole idea is to protect your home network or office from hacker and virus attacks. Now I have a picture here for you. Someone could you please put the picture. As you see in this picture, it's a home network connected to the internet through the firewall. Internet. Internet as you know is a sea, I should say ocean of computers. Some of them are hackers. What is a hacker? Hackers are the ones who watches the private data traffic on the internet. Reasons of hacking are theft, revenge, or some other bad intention in mind. You know most of the data traffic on the internet is encrypted. Encrypted means it's not plain text. It's scrambled with some keys. I hope Situ can explain more about keys. Sure, Manu. Encryption means encoding the data with a security key. De decryption means decoding the same data with the same security key. For example, if your data is say 10, you know, I'm just giving a simple example, say 10, number 10 is your data. So, but with encryption, you use a security key, say your security key is 5. You use a method, your method is addition. So you add 5, 10 plus 5 equals 15. So this data, encrypted data, is sent through the network and it goes to the receiver's end. What happens in the receiver's end? Remember, the receiver should also know about the security key and it should also know about the method. So the receiver gets this encrypted data. So it does the opposite, that is subtraction, and it knows that the security key is 5. So it does minus 5. 15 minus 5 equals 10. So then it decodes the data. De decryption takes place. But in reality, it's not as simple as I'm saying right now. It's actually very complicated, in fact. So actually, encryption uses software, and uh, it's, it uses its own uh, uniform algorithm to carry out the process. Back to you, Monu. Thank you, Sidhu. Now, nowadays there are special softwares like Wireshark to help decode the data and thus get the private information that one host sends to another. But unfortunately, a firewall can't help in this topic it, because it's being uh, processed in the internet. But a firewall can stop hackers' access to your home network or office. So now I have a diagram here for you. So as you see in this diagram, it's a home network, I should say office network, connected to a hub and that hub is connected to the internet through a firewall. This firewall, no, this firewall could also be a router. So, now this laptop, this man right here, he is a fire employee from this office network. So he has some real bad intention of this office. So that's why he wants to hack this office network. So now, his data travels here, travels, travels, 
But there is Mr. Firewall in this case. Firewall will check the data. Is he trustworthy or not? In this case, he's not trustworthy. So the firewall will drop the packet. So that's how firewall works in incoming data. But in the outgoing data, in the office network, I should say for example, the boss said all in the company, said a company, announced a rule. All the users, all the employees are not supposed to access youtube.com for example. Then he'll say he'll configure all firewalls to block youtube.com. So when host one for example accesses youtube.com, he'll travel through the hub, he'll reach, he'll try to go to the internet, but Mr. Firewall again comes in action. He'll check, is it blocked or is it unblocked? It's blocked, so he'll drop the packet. This is how a firewall works in outcoming, outgoing data and incoming data. So now I have another picture here for you. Shamu, could you please put the next picture? As you see in this picture, it's a home network connected to the modem and that modem is connected to the internet through cell phone cables as shown. Modem. Modem, you, as you know, if modem's full form is modulating and demodulating. I hope Shamu can explain more about modulating and demodulating. Modulation is basically mixing your computer data with a wave. This with a high frequency wave. Now remember, high frequency means high energy. Now this is high energy because so that it can uh, be sent through lo lo long distance. So that's why it's being mixed with high frequency, which is high energy waves. Demodulation on the other end means uh, taking out the mixed data so that you get the actual data. Now there are many kinds of modulation. One of one of them is you know mixing with the wave or mixing the amplitude, etc. There are many kinds of waves. These are just some examples. Now, for example, in the case of DSL connection, what happens is when you're trying to connect to the internet, you're using your telephone line. And now telephone lines cannot uh, send your computer data for long distances. That's where your modem comes in place. What your modem does is it modulates your computer data, which is actually binary, or in other words, 0, 1 bit pulses, I mean, uh, or in other words, electric pulses. So what it does is it mixes these electric pulses with a wave. This wave is known as a... Um, known as a carrier frequency wave. Now it mixes this carrier frequency wave with this computer, electric pulses, and it sends to the cable. Now this reaches the, uh, it reaches the uh, switch, I, I have to say, switch. And now what the switch does is, it demodulates. What it does is, it takes out this carrier frequency wave and gets the actual data, and then it sends to the internet, or in other words, a digital network. Back to you, Mono. Thank you, Shamu. Now coming back to the pick, as you see in the first case, there is no firewall installed. That means user can surf any website and anyone from the internet can access their home network as well. But in the second case, there is a firewall installed. Thus, certain data traffic not allowed, indicated by the red lines below the firewall. So if you have a firewall installed on the gateway routers of your home network or office, you are free from scary thoughts of hacker attacks. You know such an attack might wipe out all your precious data for example, bank account details. This is a very harmful thing in life, such as hackers then contact the bank with the information they got from your computer. For the bank, what matters is the passes, password. What, what is going to do next? Undoubtedly, you can take away all your money. So the topmost subject you have to think about when your computers are connected to the internet is data security. Uh, in other words, you want restricted access to your systems. This is what you achieve through a smart firewall. A firewall could be software based or hardware based or even a combination. Basically, it's implemented in routers. What is a router? A router is a network device which controls internet data traffic or including data pack, including uh, routing of packets in an efficient way. When you do a simple browse, for example, CNN.com, your data packet travels to the target CNN web server through many routers as well. These routers of the internet route these packets through the best route uh, for, th I mean I should say, through the best route because it should reach the destination as fast as possible. Now let me ma just mention you all about spoofing. It is a kind of hacking or internet attack. It is a trick in hacker, it is a trick by hackers in which he or his program successfully poses as another by false, falsifying, false, falsifying the data and thereby fooling the firewall. 
The main technique is to manipulate the source address to make the firewall think it's an authentic address. Nowadays, smart firewalls are able to recognize spoofing attack as well. Let me talk about the basic two types of firewall. We have the network level firewall and the application level firewall. Network level firewall. They are the first generation firewall. They inspect packet headers and filtering data based on the source and destination IP addresses. The port and the service means uh, you know different applications such as FTP, web, etc. all have different port numbers. Example, Telnet. Uh, Telnet is bound to have port number 23. Uh, port 23. I mean, it's bound to have port number 23. So if you block port number 23 on a server, you will not be able to turn it to that server. Now, for a packet to packet to pass, it must match defined rules. Rules can include of source and destination IP address, source and destination port or service, and protocol being used. For example, a uh, source a packet came from a source whose address is in a block range. The packet will be dropped immediately. Number two, application level firewall. They, as the name in case, they look more into the application level data going through their filters. Application level filtering can include uh, protection against spams and viruses, and block unwanted websites based on their content rather than just their address. They're also known as security proxy. For example, an application. Uh, Application gateway is configured as a web proxy. Nobody, nobody can have an FTP, FTP or telling connection to that uh, uh, application gateway. Yeah. So note, in practice, many firewalls use two or more of these techniques in a combination. And firewall is the first line of defense in protecting private private information. For greater security, you can use. Uh, the data can be encrypted, said earlier by Situ herself. So, now I have another picture for you. Shamkuri, please, for the next picture. As you see in this pic, firewalls are implemented in both ends, both sides. For example, this could be a Google web server, and this could be a typical application of firewall, which only allows web access, and thus no one can have any FTP type connection to that server. But on the client side, this firewall could be like, act like a network level firewall, which will block all suspicious data based on the source address. Whew, that was a lot. Can I have a water? Nah.